What's going on everyone? My name is Prerog Juthani. Today I want to talk to you about a topic that's very close to my heart, which is how to find your X factor in school. Here's a picture of me uh, with a recent publication I had in The Lancet. Uh, and I thought this kind of like demonstrated exactly what I mean by X factor, which is doing something that you find very rewarding and meaningful and how to ultimately find where those domains lie for you. Because the quicker you fi find that out, the more uh, joy you can get because the activities you're doing will be right in the realm of the X factor. So before we begin, let's define what is the X factor? What does that mean? So the X factor is essentially what your niche is, where you thrive. It's the intersection of multiple passions. And this can include things like sports, your career, what you like enjoy doing on your free time. Ultimately, exploring all of this and determining what your niche is going to be as you move forward is one of the best investments that you can make as a student because, as I said, it will really give you a guidance for what you want to see yourself doing in the future. So, for example, if you're a med student, what kind of like physician do you end up wanting to be in the future? Do you want to be an academic physician who publishes a lot of papers in a particular area of research interest? Or do you want to be a, like an emergency medicine physician who's known for running marathons? Notice that these are two entirely different X factors, right? One is a physician who has taken a much more academic route, whereas the second is a physician who has taken a bit more of the work-life balance route and is trying to optimize that. Both are equally uh, important, and it all just really comes down to what these individuals value, and the earlier they find that out the earlier they find this balance the more um, I'd say the more rewarding ultimately they'll have in terms of uh, doing things that they like doing so with that being said how can we actually find our X factors you're a student right now either in high school college or even medical school the first thing I encourage anyone to do is to explore your values what means a lot to you and think about all of the things that you actually think mean a lot to you and be very truthful these can this can be things like your family your health your money the status the legacy I remember maybe 10 years ago, I used to not care at all about money. And now that I've actually you know, grown up a little bit and um, am graduating from medical school, money has come to take on a little bit more importance in my head than it was earlier, right? So remembering what values you care most about is going to be imperative to determine what your X factor is going to be and how to find that X factor. One way to determine what those values are for you is to actually think about what makes you the most happy because chances are that means you value those things quite a bit. So for example, if you go running all the time like me and find that you are often at the one of the most happiest points right after you finish your run, maybe that implies that you know running means a lot to you and what do you value in running? Maybe it means you value a certain level of growth mindset and challenging yourself, right? And so Think about those values. That's the first step. Create that list. The second step now is to diversify your experiences based on those values. If you have demonstrated your values, you can now pick several experiences linked to those values and try doing them, right? So I can almost even argue that doing these experiences can also tell you a bit about what you value and why you value them. So do a lot of activities at a very superficial level to see which ones you enjoy and that is, that is, I think, the best done during college, high school, and maybe a little bit of medical school, right? In college, you really want to spread yourself very wide and do a lot of activities. But notice that when you do these activities, you want to start by mentioning to them and being very open that you are going to start these activities with a very low commitment. So that way, if you don't enjoy them, you can actually say, hey, I tried this out and maybe this is not for me. So for example, uh, do these activities and see which ones you look forward to throughout the week. So when I was an undergrad, I started going to a lab. I started formulating hypotheses for experiments. I started doing intramural sports. I did a service club. I, I was starting to tutor. I was starting to interact with others. I was doing shadowing. I did a large number of activities. And the good part about all of these is that I got a good internal bearing of what I liked and what I didn't like. I knew for a fact that I liked I like thinking about going into lab and thinking about what each of the experiments was telling me, but I actually did not like actually conducting those experiments. So by doing a lot of these experiences, I actually was able to inform myself about certain values that I liked and what I liked about them, or maybe even also refine those experiences to determine what I want to do moving forward. The other reason why I encourage people to do a lot of experiences pretty early on in education is because it's almost the same as diversification, right? It's very bad to put all your eggs in one basket because you don't give yourself to see what's out there. And one of my biggest regrets to this day is that I never took any business or humanities courses in undergrad. I was taking mostly science courses. And guess what? When I got to med school and I did my MBA, 
I felt so upset at myself because I did not realize there was this whole other world of healthcare and this whole other lens of viewing the world that I had totally just neglected in my undergrad because I had pigeonholed myself into putting all my eggs into the medical basket. When in reality, maybe I should have explored a bit more of other fields because I really do think there's a lot to gain. So that's why very early on, almost always just say yes to different experiences. Ask for a very low commitment first step. Say like, hey, I'm interested in this. Again, I don't know how committed I'm going to be down the road, but if it's okay with you because I'm exploring, maybe we can start with a, a mini project or maybe I can shadow you for a few days and we can figure out how to move forward from there. So that's the second step. Do a lot of experiences early on because it really will tell you a lot more about yourself and what you value. And then once you've done these two steps, the next and last step is to actually rework and refine. So based on the large activities that you picked earlier, you now want to slowly cut that list down based on the activities that you don't like and then expand the list in terms of the activities that you did like. And as you do this more and more and you repeat this over and over, you will find a more refined niche that caters specifically to you as opposed to a general med student or college student, right? So there's two caveats here. The first one is that you still need to be caring in the way you drop activities. You can't just drop an activity as if like, oh, I don't care about this anymore. The whole point is to, first of all, when you started that activity, you should have asked for a small project to begin with. And and then if you don't want to continue that activity, you can slowly just say, hey, I'm going to, I don't have time to commit to this right now. And I will maybe down the road reconsider, but for right now, I just can't do it. And the way you're going to decide whether you get a positive vibe or a negative vibe from an activity is going to be based entirely on your gut, right? So if an activity brings you a lot of joy, usually that means you like it. If someone in another activity rubs you the wrong way, then maybe you need to cut that activity or that person out a little bit. All of these things are going to help you see the types of people and the types of activities that resonate with you. And as you do this, you will find your niche. And that you can then refine to be your X factor, right? So... With that being said, let me now show you an example of how this works for me. This is my personal timeline of activities that I've done since high school. You can see in high school, I did a lot of running, science, science bowl, interact, and you can see the things that have a positive next to them are things that rub me the right way, and the things that have a negative next to them are things that I realized I didn't like. And by doing a lot of activities early on, I was able to create a niche that I, that I kind of hold to this day. So for example, I knew I loved running, and I figured that out in high school. I knew I loved science, but then I tried this thing called the Science Bowl where you're supposed to get tr quizzed on science trivia, and I was like, this is not my vibe. This is like, I suck at it. I don't like it. It doesn't bring me that much joy. Um, and then I also did this thing in high school called Interact, which is all about service-oriented organizations, and I realized I love service, right? And so you can already see this was already laying the foundations for why I ended up pursuing medicine, science and service already from high school. And then in college, you'll see that I, do, I, I started doing a bit of research and I did like research. I loved reading research. I loved seeing research. I loved hypothesizing and speculating things we don't know and uncover. But the thing that I didn't like was basic science research. And again, spread myself pretty thin in college in the sense of doing a lot of activities. But through this, I realized I did not like basic science. Similarly, I also realized I liked teaching. But within teaching, I realized I didn't like tutoring. So I loved telling people things that I learned and I love sharing with them why this was so exciting for me. But I didn't explicitly like tutoring in that sense of like, here, let me show you exactly how to do this. For me, it was a lot more about like showing someone as opposed to like following a protocol way of teaching, which I wasn't as big of a fan of. So this is, this is high school, this is college. Now let's talk about in between college and med school. In between college and med school, I started my YouTube channel, which I realized I love doing. But then I also worked a corporate job at Kaplan, which I realized I didn't like that much. I also started doing a little bit of entrepreneurship things where I started my board game. Um, I also tried reading a little bit in my gap year, as well as um, you can see, I, I created a lot of videos and I also learned through videos. So all that leading into med school, I knew that I loved running, I loved service, I loved teaching, and I loved science. I applied to med school, and in the process of applying to med school, I realized, hey, I really like open-ended problem solving, I love creating videos, but I don't like reading that much. And so already you can see like the foundations of where I started realizing my niche was. Because the moment I realized I liked videos a little bit more, I started realizing maybe I like technology, and maybe I liked seeing how technology works with medicine. And so you can see that was a big, big realization for me. Um, when I entered medicine, I gave myself a chance to see surgery or internal medicine. I did a bit of surgery research, and I remember one surgery mentor to me said, 
don't ask stupid questions. And right away I was like, that is not something I like hearing. It just made me feel like, like this big. And that was not something I liked and it rubbed me the wrong way. Um, not to mention, I just didn't like being in the OR that much. So all of that made me dissuade surgery and I ended up pursuing clinical research and internal medicine instead. Um, and now today you can see that all of this has led me by, by dropping things that I didn't appreciate as much and keeping and holding on to things that I enjoyed. To this day, I'm still a runner. I am now a YouTuber and I use YouTube as a means of merging my love of technology with medicine. I'm a clinical researcher. I do a lot of clinical research related to COVID-19, which is where the photo at the beginning of this presentation came from, this uh, clinical research project I did on COVID-19. And I also love digital health. And how did I find this niche? Well, you can see that this is a very unique niche. You won't find very many students who are in med school who like doing clinical research, YouTubing, and learning about digital health. They may like all of them, but I have been able to do things in each of these things because I've actually explored these domains. So all of that to say, this is how I found my niche and making sure you do a lot of activities early on can help you refine and get to this place here, which, which I feel for me personally right now, I'm very happy with. I want to end with some common mistakes that people make when they're trying to find their niche. Not saying no early enough. Some people do things that they know they don't enjoy for far way too long. And this is where like you need to learn to say no and you need to learn to say like I don't enjoy this as much as I thought I would and so I don't think I want to do this. Uh, not just for activities but also for people who, who don't make you feel appreciated or maybe don't make you feel the right way. Um, the other mistake people make is they commit way too early. They think like, oh, I want to be an academic researcher. And they're so stuck on that from day one that they often don't realize that there's so much more to, to research. There's digital health research, there's industry research, there's entrepreneurship, right? There's so much stuff that if you commit too early, kind of like I did in high school and college to medicine, that you may not realize like, oh, there's other industries that can help me understand medicine a bit better, like business. Um, these last two are not being open enough about you know wanting to explore. And when you don't explore, you're not able to discover what you want. And oftentimes when people actually try to explore, they take on too much responsibility way too fast. Again, totally discourage that. Every activity you do for at least a few months, you should just have your foot wet. Don't try to like get too involved. Just get your foot wet and see what it's like. Um, and the last one here is not enough introspection. You really do need to introspect a lot. And anyone who knows me knows I go on a lot of walks. Like sometimes at midnight, I just leave my apartment and go on like a two hour walk thinking about like my life. Um, and really having that introspection and knowing what matters to you will go a long way in determining what your niche is because it will determine your values and those values will guide your activities and those activities will guide your niche. One thing to remember is some people think like, honestly, there's no niche for me. I just feel so different. Uh, and that is a good feeling to have. If you feel like there's not a good niche for you, that means you are very, very different. And that means you actually have a chance to carve out your own niche that may be very, dr very drastically different from what existed before. How many people would have thought being a YouTuber med student who enjoys doing clinical research and digital health would have been a niche 20 years ago? Wasn't something that was even on anyone's radar. And today it's becoming slowly more and more popular, right? So Finding that and realizing that there is an option is a huge realization and don't let up on it. So I hope this, this video was helpful for you, everyone. And if it was, drop a like, comment, share, subscribe, uh, and I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you all for watching. Peace.